When the army goes overseas, the soldiers often encounter wet or sandy terrain which can be hazardous to aircraft and vehicles. Recently in Afghanistan, two Chinook helicopters worth £25 million each were damaged in the harsh conditions. One solution is to build concrete runways or lay aluminium tracking, but these are costly, heavy and time-consuming. Often, pilots just have to have to go for a risky landing. Now, the answer to the problem may lie in something as simple as this piece of plastic. Now, unlike other landing materials, it's light enough to take on board, it's incredibly strong, and it's fast to deploy. Essential if you need to land in unstable conditions in a hurry. Tomorrow's World is here to witness the first test of this material with an Apache, one of the most powerful helicopters in modern military use. This is one of 67 recently bought by the British Army for use in combat and peacekeeping operations throughout the world. Now we've got a very special link up here right up in the air so that I can talk directly with the pilot of the Apache over there. Hello, Vic. Hi there. What sort of problems do you have when you're landing an Apache? Uh, the problems are that the aircraft can be quite heavy. If you load up with uh, fuel and ammunition, it can weigh up towards 10 tonnes and obviously it will sink in the ground and it could damage parts of the aircraft. And then do you get lots of different types of terrain when you're abroad? Yeah, we could be operating in the Arctic in snow, soft sand in the desert or even in the jungle. And uh, if you land on that terrain and it's not checked correctly, you will break the aircraft. Have you personally had any bad landing experiences? Uh, I've had a few uh, landings in the past in Belize, in the jungle and in the desert where we've landed in soft ground and uh, nearly damaged an aircraft, yeah. At around 27 million per aircraft, it's an expensive risk to take. This new model of Apache has such state-of-the-art equipment that pilots can read a car number plate seven miles away. Its radar system allows it to detect more than a thousand targets at once, and the onboard computer can transfer data to other aircraft and to the commander at base, who's relayed a video image of what the pilot is seeing through his night vision sensor. Well, that was fantastic. What an amazing machine. It's time now to see if this flooring is up to the job. Fergus, Ardern, you Hi. invented this system, and how exactly does it work? It diffuses load. It right. spreads load, a um, bit like a snowshoe. Right. If you have, if you stand on a piece of soft snow or ground, you'll you'll sink in. Okay. Whereas if you make your foot really large and put a big, big, big lump around it, it'll right. hold you up. But will it cope with the weight of a 19-ton truck? As Fergus predicts, just a few pieces spread the load, and the ground is left intact. So the material can handle a heavy truck, but is it fast to deploy? The Army Aviation Corps want to know whether this system is the quick landing solution they require. So we've got eight members of the squadron here, four using the new flooring and four over here using an aluminium flooring that the Army use at the moment. What they've got to do as quickly as possible is race against each other and build a landing surface for the Apache. So are you ready? Go! Now, Fergus, the first obvious question is, for the aluminium, they're using a crane. Is that an unfair advantage? The aluminium's too heavy to lift. Right. They have to use a crane. So every time they go into uh, an operation, they have to bring a, a truck with a crane? Absolutely, in. they have to have a truck with a crane and heavy equipment. And if, if they're operating near the enemy, they need something fast. So here we are, just over 10 minutes gone, and as you can see, the new flooring is nearly finished. If you have a look over here at the aluminium flooring, well, they've only got about five pieces down and probably another 12 pieces left to go. No contest here. And in just 14 minutes and three seconds, Fergus's landing pad is complete. The heavy aluminium flooring still has a long way to go. As Mick fixes the landing pad in his sights, the biggest test for the plastic flooring is yet to come. The problem with some temporary platforms is that they can get caught in recirculating air under the helicopter, flip upwards and damage the rotor blades and engines. So how will Fergus's system perform? Mick, please of the landing. Yeah, very good. It's the first time I've landed on a prepared platform that's not been pinned. Right. Normally that would lift and hit the helicopter. 
So it's very impressive. It's very clear on the infrared camera, so it'd be good for day or night. And clearly, it uh, takes the weight of the aircraft. And something you'd use again? Yeah, it's very good. I'm very impressed.